Hey y'all and welcome to the Max Life. So you see some empty buckets. I have a box full of sweet potatoes. And money. And what I am doing is bartering. I wish we could make this a more common practice. But I have found a post on Facebook from a local friend who doesn't live too far from us. And they have a yard full of pecans. So I'm going to trade some sweet potatoes or some pecans and I've got some of the girls with me. We're gonna pick those up. I'm going to try to crack most of them myself so I don't have to get into paying for them to be cracked. And we're off to go pick those up. Y'all, we have made it back home. Here is a five gallon bucket of pecans. We have a couple extra right here. My plan is to spend the afternoons um, like kind of once we get done with supper and get everybody settled at night usually that's when the kids will kind of sit down and kind of unwind we'll usually turn the TV on and either catch up on um, our friends that are on YouTube or maybe watch something that we're wanting to learn about you know something like that we'll kind of turn the TV on we'll all sit together as a family and usually spend a little bit of time before we go to bed just watching TV um, I wanted to show y'all what I've been out here doing. So I had a fence all around this. The dogs were really bad about jumping into the beds, digging, digging, digging. I think they have mostly, let's cross our fingers, I think they have mostly outgrown of that. Uh, y'all, if y'all have seen this, I know I've kind of shown y'all it on and off, but it was so overgrown. There was so much stuff in here. The sweet potatoes in this bed have been all dug up. Guys, I'm finally, well, I'll say that. I'll have to show y'all something in a minute. I'm um, for the most part done digging up the sweet potatoes. Wow, this looks so much different if y'all seen it compared to what it looked like last time. I have pretty much all cleaned all of this up. I'm about to start prepping it for fall planting. I did decide to leave this tomato plant because it is still so healthy and I still have some blooms on it right here. Y'all can see those. So I'm just going to actually, I'm fixing to feed this really good. I left all the peppers because I still have peppers producing as well. Here is the bed that you guys saw me clean out. We have for the most part come through in blue. I see one spot that Mr. Mac missed, but that's okay. All of these beds over here, y'all look how much different this looks. All of this has been cleaned up. I did decide to leave this purple basil right here and let me show you why i hope y'all could see that honeybee but the bees are absolutely loving these flowers they're still beautiful little flowers see look beautiful little flowers right there that is providing some for them through the fall so i do i took up most of all of the rest of this because i do need to prep these beds for winter planting and but i decided to leave this for the bees i've cleaned up all the strawberry beds it looks so much better i can actually walk out here on my tarp this was all sweet potato vines on all of my walkways they had literally just about took over i finished this bed up I finished this section over here up, which you guys saw me dig those up. Finished this up a couple of days ago. I'm still finding sweet potatoes though. Here's three that I have found just since I've been out here. I pulled up the rest of the marigolds and tomatoes that were in this bed and I found them right up in here. And I honestly would not be surprised if I found another one or two in here just because they grow and they spread out y'all like absolutely crazy um i do need to go up to the barn we have some rabbit manure up there i've got to start bringing that stuff down here now i found a little one now that it is time to start fall planting i need to go ahead and get these beds fed that is just kind of how we use our rotations we feed them real heavy in the spring plant our things, let them grow, do some maintenance in the summer. Come fall when we clean all the beds out, I can really work the soil. I go get a lot of the manure, get it put in these beds, work it in the soil, replant. Now all of this kale that you see over here, we actually did not plant. This was from the kale that I planted last year. It actually stood right here. 
and the reason why they're all over here is because I let the thing go to seed. Y'all know I have talked to y'all and talked to y'all and talked to y'all about the importance of letting your things go to seed. It is not pretty. I'm not going to lie, but I literally just drop the seeds right over here and you can see how much they've grown. I did come out here right before we left to go on our vacation and if you see this, you see that I found little worms on them which is the only really bad part about the seeds going ahead and germinating really kind of before the summer's over. But I'm going to tell y'all what I did. As soon as I found the worms, I went ahead and smushed all the worms and on the little leaves that I could, I just come in and did just what I did a while ago. I just kind of pinched those bad leaves off and you see that they're already growing back beautifully. Here was one again that was just kind of eaten off of so I just pinched that off and tossed it to the side and they are growing back really, really nice right now because they're coming in from that root system that has already established. See, there's another one back here. I'm just gonna pinch it off and get it out of the way. But this is still fine. So even though I have some leaves on there that have been eaten, I'm just going to pinch those off and give my roots a chance to grow those new leaves back and i was out here doing some teaching the other day with a family member and found a couple more worms so a couple stayed in the bed and uh, i missed them but i refound them and i'm sure there's probably a couple more but they're not doing nearly the damage that they were doing and that's that so i already have this whole section of kale planted because i didn't even plant it i literally just shook the seeds off in there I've taught y'all a lot about that and the importance of that. I showed y'all some of my greens over here that have been there since last year. This is actually the first time I've ever done that. I literally just left this whole stock right here in the ground over the summer and just kind of kept those leaves. Some of the leaves were absolutely huge. But if we didn't eat them, some of them were not very tender anymore. But if we didn't eat them, of course, there's always the animals. And y'all, they're already growing back so beautifully. This is the first time that we've done this. And I'm, I'm assuming not all of them are going to always work because this little piece right here that I'm actually just going to pull up is not growing anything off of it. Although it still does feel like it's alive. Yeah, it's got some green down in there. But it was not actually growing off any leaves. So... All right, guys, we need to go all the way up to the barn. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. It's in a wheelbarrow, so I guess I'm going to be walking it all the way back. Grabbing a shovel, I'm going to start getting some of that stuff out. Turn that dirt, and we need to start getting a couple of our fall things in the ground. We're going to try to do most of that today. And keep it good and watered. It's mid-October absolutely insane that the year is going by so fast but here we are and um yeah full-blown winter will be here before we know it that's a haul right there all the way up from the big barn all the way down the driveway to over here it'd be a little unfair to say that's an easy move because it definitely is not but i've already started some in this bed I've got my containers in here. I'm going to go ahead. So what I was working on here. I had to stop for just a minute. We'll put some in each one of these beds. Then I'll be hopping over to this area right here and um, adding some compost over into that too. Well, it's not actual compost, true compost. It's actually manure, straight up manure. Believe me, you would not want to smell this. Um, but it does a wonderful job of feeding our plants. You know, there are a lot of people that do the chemical thing. It's just not what we choose to do. If we put chemicals on our fruits and vegetables, I kind of almost feel like you might as well go to the store and buy your fruits and vegetables because it's really no difference. Um, it might be a little bit cheaper, 
you know i don't know by the time you buy the chemical it might not be but we feed our rabbits they don't actually eat a whole lot and we have done a whole series on raising small animals if you guys have not seen that go back and check out um the max it's over on the max talking about the benefits of having small animals and being able to utilize them for so many other things just like the manure that they put out you know we don't even want that to go to waste it will feed all of our plants and our plants then turn around and feed us so it's just like this cycle you know we can feed them plants they eat we give them a little bit of different things like alfalfa what they put out we use we, we eat some of them what they put out we use to feed us in other ways so it, it's really once you learn the cycle and understand that the way they used to do it was really the right way we have just messed things up so bad um, I honestly sometimes wonder if our generations will recover from the loss of knowledge where we're at right now. I really say there's not a whole lot of hope. Um, but then, you know, there are people like myself and Colby that try to use platforms like this to teach other people about, I was, at, okay, for example, I was actually talking to a man today. And his mother would have probably been 90. She passed away a couple of years ago. She probably would be over 90 now. She was an older lady. And I was had actually the one that we went to get, get the pecans from. And I told him, I said, your mother would have loved it at my house. Because we're doing the things that she was raised doing. And that's what it's all about. Um, you know, we want to go back to the way living off the land. It's not done perfect here because we're still learning as well. I'm sure there are a lot of things that we don't know still to this day. A lot of things that we do know. We wanna to try to implement those. And, you know, more importantly, to where we, you know, we've been telling y'all this for a long time. If something were to happen where we ever found ourselves in a situation where, again, they're telling a lot of these people, you know, you may not have power for months now you know, for us, that would, of course, be a major inconvenience. That would be really hard. There's going to be a level of food loss from the freezers that I'm sure what we would we would take to an extent. Now, our plan would be this. And I'm just sharing this with y'all because I think it's kind of critical to know right now. If something were to happen to our power and we were to not have power for many months on out, the first thing we would do would be to hook up our generators, use our extra gases, start eating all of the cold stuff first, starting in the fridges, wipe them out, eat everything from out of there for as long as we could. Then we would immediately go to the freezers. I have, sort, I have ways that I can can without electricity. So I would be trying to can some of those things um while we were eating at the freezer as well because we have the amount of freezers and meat that we do i'm sure that we would not be able to probably consume all of that of course sharing with our family and neighbors and stuff as well and the rest of the stuff is either dehydrated freeze dried or, or canned in some way and that would be the rest of what we would do um now, our ancestors didn't have to worry about electricity of the sort because they lived off the land and they didn't have to worry. They didn't put themselves in situations like we do today where we're so dependent on electricity. So, saying all of that to say, we know we're trying our hardest to do it the right way. It's not always going to be perfect. There are times that we, we need to learn to do stuff better ways or um, reorganize or regroup and rethink, but we're trying. Um, and I would love to see more and more people jump on board. It's a true blessing when somebody stops to say, and we've had so many people tell us this, y'all, and it really does encourage us because we feel like we are making a difference. But we've had so many people tell us, I'm farming for the first time because of y'all or we've been growing for the first time the past year because of y'all y'all have inspired us y'all have encouraged us and that for us is what it's all about it's the reason why we get out here we show you the hard work let me be completely honest with you Colby has been down with a stomach virus for the past three days 
nights have been not fun for him now me and the kids so far have been okay but for him he's been really sick but the only way to keep going is to keep putting one step forward taking care of himself he has been able to go to bed early a couple of those nights to help catch up on some rest drinking lots and lots of fluid but you know it's one of those things where to i'm just saying that to tell you this it is hard work i'm by no means trying to make light of what we do um <clears throat> there are days i don't want to come out here and sweat there are days that he doesn't want to get up in the morning and milk but you know we have to remind ourselves just like our ancestors did and the people did in the past they did this day in and they did it day out because it was just their way of life and that's try that is where we have tried to focus on knowing that if we plant we work hard we grow we raise up these animals it's not always easy the blessings come down the road first you reap then you sow the work has to be put in first your rewards come from your labor in the long run but it doesn't mean that you can do it sometimes and then you stop you have to keep pushing through and I appreciate when you guys tell me hey we've started doing this or hey I've started canning or hey I've started making soap whatever it is a lot of y'all have told me a lot of different things to share in um, the many different skills that you've learned and we're so thankful that a lot of y'all have really stepped out on that limb and said you know hey we may be the odd one in our community, but we're going to try this. Or we may be different from so-and-so, but you know what? It doesn't matter. We're going to try this. And that is the beauty of it all because there are neighbors that are living off of neighbors right now in other areas, which I, again, think is a beautiful thing that some neighbors have skills to help out other neighbors. Hey, we can work together. I think it's a wonderful thing. And that, you know, I'm going back to telling y'all about showing y'all this youtube thing we show you our hard work it is not always a walk in the park just like i just explained to y'all but the beauty of the the blessings come you know all throughout the season of doing this and we want to share those things with you too because there are days you're going to put a lot of hard work in and think you know am i ever going to see the benefits of this yes yes you will just like with my sweet potato harvest I put years worth of building my slips up so I could just plant them everywhere. That was a lot. That was a lot to take in. But just kind of sharing with y'all today. Don't give up. Keep trucking. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. If something doesn't go right, it's okay. Learn from that. Use everything that you do to help you learn. Guys, I'm just going to finish getting this out. It's almost supper time, which means... Yes, sweet potatoes is on the menu again because we have a lot of them. That means I've got to get inside and get things going. We'll finish working out here and then we are going to call it a day so I can get in and get supper prepped. Cooking from scratch takes time, which means I can't spend all my time outside. I have to go in and prep from that for that too so that we can eat the things that we grow and it takes time to prep and cook those raw foods so i can't just go in and whip something out of the cabinet throw it in the oven that's not how we operate here so guys i am fixing to put you down gave you a little pep talk for today and i'm gonna finish up in my high tunnel and i have the couple of beds over on the other side for y'all that have not ever seen we've got these beds here i've got a little bit more cleaning up to do in between the rows my greenhouse looks a whole lot better and on the other side of my musket iron tree is a whole bunch more beds over there so a little bit more work to do before i can call it a day then we're going to go inside and start cooking guys thank you as always for watching for tagging along if you have any specific questions y'all please drop those below send me an email we really do try to go through most of our comments and um, look for the feedback from y'all thank you again as always for watching god bless and happy homesteading y'all